structure and function of the nucleus so just uh, if you observe in the center the especially in the animal cell this nucleus is present and then here you can observe the various that is double membrane is an important one and in between that the perinuclear space is present besides that the gazel bodies as well as the chromosomes are present inside the nuclear that is next to the double membrane a small layer is surrounding that that is the lamina nuclear lamina then the nucleolus is also important then the where the various type of functions occurs so for that how the proteins are moved in and out so the in the membrane there are many pores so that forms a complex so that complex is called nuclear pore complex okay so we will see one by one the nucleus contains most of the cells dna so they are regulating the gene expression and inheritance of the various information from one generation to another generation is also possible with the help of the genetic material which are present in the nucleus so the dna rna are present in the nucleus whereas the protein is in ribosomes okay so the sophisticated regulation of the gene expression and passing on the information from one generation to another generation so mostly they are done by the components of the nucleus so the nucleus envelop the double membrane that is surrounding the nucleus and the, it contains the sub compartments okay they are not membrane bound whether if you take the nucleolus they are not membrane bound then the nuclear envelope contains the pores they are importing the protein into the nucleus because from the ribosomes which are present in the cytoplasm transfer the proteins into the nucleus okay or from the nucleus the rna along with the trna it is coming to the uh, site of ribosome where the proteins are synthesized so the major components are within the nucleus if you observe the chromosome is the first important one then nuclear matrix okay as like uh, what we are calling cytoskeleton matrix which are present in the cytoplasm these are the microtubular microfibrillar like that in that the organelles are bathed similarly here the nuclear matrix then nucleoli and the fluid state is called a nucleoplasm okay and nuclei vary in ap appearance according to the cell type as well as the organism the size of the nucleus if you observe that it is from 1 micron to more than 10 micron in diameter and most of the cells have single nucleus almost 99% it is eukaryotes have one cell nucleus and the condensed nuclear minute particles are present in the prokaryotes as nucleoid okay and multiple nuclei is also present in some of the cases and some of the cases there is no nucleus at all example the mature red blood cells okay the percentage of the genome that are present in the organism that is the genome what is genome the entire genetic makeup of the organism is genome so in that it is a heterochromatin okay that varies among the cell and increases so that only we are saying that chromosomal number varied depending upon the organisms and they are differentiated based on the cell and first we will see about the nuclear envelope that is on the bio membrane which are surrounding the nucleus okay so the outer membrane and the inner membrane and perinuclear space are the major components of the nuclear envelope and this nuclear envelope having the attachment either with either with endoplasmic reticulum or with golgi also okay the network like fibers so you can see here the smooth endoplasmic reticulum get attached to that and inside that there is a dark stained one that is the nucleus 
and the chromosomal threads, chromatin threads are present everywhere. Then nuclear lamina is the next layer adjacent to the nuclear membrane. Okay, next to that, that is lamin proteins are present. That lamina it comes under the middle type and then so that lamin layer is present and besides that for allowing the material to pass in between the cytoplasm and the nucleus the nuclear pore complex is present and on the endoplasmic reticulum which are attached to the nuclear matrix or nuclear envelope the ribosomes are also get attached to that so this is the whole structure of the nucleus and the nuclear envelope two complete membrane and the lumen of the nuclear envelope is continuous with the lumen of the ER. This is a important point. The, whatever the <coughs> lipids or the proteins which are produced in that, it is possible to pass through the perinuclear peri space into the system. Okay, And the nuclear envelope contains numerous pores, that is the NPC nuclear pore complex. So they are the channels transport of the macromolecules between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Okay, so if you just see the component, two cellular membranes and that membranes act as a selective membrane so that it uh, allow the certain materials to diffuse but other materials it acts as a barrier to ions, solutes as well as the macromolecules. And the membrane fused to form the pores, as we say that nucleoporins are also important. So it is a nucleoporin is a protein, and that complex protein make a assemblage of other pro with the other protein. So it is a complex assembly. Then outer membrane. So just if you see that ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, it is continuous with the ER. The inner membrane bound to nuclear lamina. That is next to inner membrane you can see a nuclear lamina that is a filamentous network and the nuclear lamina what is the function it supports the envelope so that the attachment of chromatin is possible with the help of the lamin layer okay then nuclear laminar fibers and also it belongs to the lamin super family and they are the intermediate filaments of the cytoplasm they are looking like intermediary filaments of the cytoplasm okay so this is the whole structure and how the nuclear pore complex is formed okay. so the large number of proteins everybody know they are synthesized in the cytoplasm in the ribosomes and transported to the nucleus okay and also rna manufactured in the nucleus transported to the cytoplasm so in that case how they are how it is possible so it is possible with the help of nuclear pore complex so it is a huge macromolecular complex with a octagonal symmetry so four on the inner side and four on the outer side you can see a eight structure structures eight fold repetition of the subunits are present so in that the proteins act as the pores that pores are called nucleoporins so it, it is almost around 30 to 50 30 to 50 proteins are acting as nucleoporins okay. so this is symmetrical on both the cytoplasmic as well as on the nuclear side so please observe this diagram observe the nuclear complex
so you can see a octagonal symmetry as well as the 30 to 50 proteins and in that complex you can see a, the cytoplasmic filament and the cytoplasmic ring then outer nuclear membrane and this is the inner nuclear membrane and in the nucleus same type as like a cytoplasmic uh, filament but here the nuclear basket like appearance okay all the force it looks like a uh, as like your um, basketball that basket okay so if you put the ball so in the bottom so it is a small sized attached with the assembly so through that the bigger pores are present on the cytoplasmic side and the smaller pores are present on the nuclear side and then it allows the molecules to pass through okay. so larger molecules are actively transported through this npc and uncharged particle particles smaller than 100 daltons can pass through the membranes of the nuclear envelope so then larger than 100 daltons only they are moving through the npc and also the 9 nanometer in diameter can pass through npc by passive diffusion so some of the molecules very small in size so it is in nanometers and also the weight is also very less they are not charged and they may move through the passive diffusion okay larger molecules are actively transported with the help of the energy through the pore complex and the does not contain the particular signal to which it has to be transported to which organelle it has to be transported there a particular receptor is present that receives this ligand okay and then the metabolic activity is carried out okay and these are symmetrical channels okay that is when the outer and the inner membranes are fused so it will not allow the material and outer membrane alone open inner membrane fused that kind of condition is not there if it is of both the channels are sorry both the sides are open or both the sides are closed okay so the outer and inner membranes are fused and in the human cell each npc has a mass of 120 to 106 daltons 40 times that of a ribosome see the size of that one it is a very big and it is from multiple copies of 30 proteins and this is having a fibrils extended to the cytoplasm and basket like structure extending to the nuclear side. Okay. So just observe the amino acids which can be studied where the particular thing. For example, if you want to localize the particular protein into the nucleus itself, it should not go to the other organelles through the pore complex. So, in that case, we need a signal. That signal is called nuclear localization signal, NLS. So, this NLS get attached to the protein. So, that makes the protein to stay within the nucleus and perform the function. Okay. So, it may be on the inner membrane or it may be in the perinuclear space or it may be in the outer membrane or in the matrix, anywhere. Okay, so it is of in the nucleus, they won't be transported. If, we, if they want to be transported, again there are attachment of other signals so that they are able to move to the cytoplasm. Okay, so the <coughs> transport receptors are present, so they are otherwise called the karyophrenes, they are soluble. And besides that, there are two important clan classes are present. One is importins then another one is exportins by the name it, name itself it is ex, self explanatory cytoplasm to nucleus or nucleus to cytoplasm with the help of exportin and low molecular weight diffuse freely macromolecules are regulated and nls is most important one and the nls vary depending upon the signal sequence 
you can see in the protein there is some change in the color in the top one what is the change in the color it looks like white colored okay so here you can see this is the nls region okay it may be in one place or it may be in many places as like you can see it in the second protein i think it is not very clear and just you can see here there is one white place and here there is another white place okay so you can see a nls signal may be in different places so that it can be localized so this is the one already we have seen spoken ring assembly how they are arranged so the nuclear ring and basket on the nucleus side fibril side in the cytoplasm and the outer membrane inner membrane then central cell transporting region the channel you can see that that is in a orange color okay those who are it is a challenge for those who are making a good drawing otherwise this doesn't look like nuclear core complex okay so this is on the outer side you have to draw the four uh, units then the inner side also same but when it is there it is not in the similar size okay in the inner side the size is reduced okay and then see that so how the central complex is formed and how it allow the molecules to pass through okay so this is the nuclear core complex okay and the proteins are called the nucleoporins where we have studied another porins aquaporins those who are transporting the water this is the nuclear nucleoporins and just this is a short repeat sequences of the dna and which are thought to interact with uh, various kind of factors during the transport so that is the you can see many amino acids are present so it may be a uh, glycine leucine phenylalanine and the glycine so like that depending upon the various type it is a uh, nucleoporin proteins are present proteins are enzymes proteins are made up of amino acids amino acids are made up of nucleotides isn't it acgt that uh, triplet codon only decides that particular amino acid okay now again you can see that in various views when it is open when it is closed okay both the sides when it open on the outer side on this uh, cytoplasmic side it is also open on the nuclear side just yes, you can see that and the diameter here also so in the cytoplasmic side it is 50 nanometer and the central frame work is around 33 to 37 nanometer whereas the nuclear basket is bigger 95 to 120 nanometer okay the besides that the totally if you are observing them the whole complex it is around 100 nanometer in yeast or 120 nanometer in vertebrate and this regulation of this either open or close it is a calcium ion based ion gated channel so ion based so what are the ions responsible it is the calcium ions okay. so are you able to see here the surface structure if you take the same photograph here if you see that it is a scanning electron by microscope photograph on the surface of the nucleus so you can see wherever the pores are present so that is the nuclear pore complex okay. and proteins are selectively transported depending upon the what type of receptor which are present in that through these nuclear pores and the mature nuclear protein contains the sequence information for localization and the protein selectively enter and exit the nucleus through the nuclear pores the information for nuclear impulse lies with a small portion of transported protein that is the signal protein so many it is a continuous exchange okay so it is it is in micro fraction of second it don't take much time to move in and out of the cytoplasm for that what is needed okay 
so the import example one of the protein is called nucleoplasmin okay nucleoplasmin is one of the protein what is the basis for this from the cytoplasm it has to import into the nucleus so what type of process occurs just you can observe so they have the nuclear localization signal because it has to go to the nucleus okay then the import in come and bind to that okay then it the whole complex go and bind to the outer assembly so after that the energy mediated active transport occurs so it makes them to move into the cytoplasm and then the separation of the importin occurs with the nucleoplasmin and then nucleoplasmin is located in the nucleus and the importin again it goes back to the original position in the cytoplasm so that it carry carry another molecule to come into the nucleus okay so it is an active process it needs another carrier protein to take that so that carrier protein is importin so initially in the cytoplasm itself both join only the energy released by the rand atp to adp so it is able to move okay so this is the one of the examples for importing okay so another the same thing same thing explained in steps the first step is nls nuclear localization signal attach it to the protein binds to the soluble nls receptor okay either it may be alpha importin or beta importin then next this complex enter into cytoplasmic filaments that is in the outer ring layer is it clear the first two points first it is attach it to the importin then it reaches the outer ring okay then the third step is cytoplasmic filaments bend towards the nucleus so what is the we, we have studied carrier protein and channel protein isn't it so for this the conformational changes has to occur so the fourth step is already the bent occurs in the filament so conformational changes occur in the transporter okay then with the help of the active transport that is the gtp import nls protein complex binds to the rand gtp and import in dissociates okay then next to that rand gtp import in beta shuttled back to the cytoplasm how that importin is also shuttled back transported by that so it it needs a nucleus to cytoplasm so exportin is helping them okay. so this is the whole process very simple process but you can write step by step okay so around six steps sorry we don't come six steps are involved and besides that the role of gtp binding protein ran is also important so it should be in active form means ran gtp so when the energy is released it becomes ran gdp then higher concentration of gtp ran in the nucleus whereas it is in the case of uh, cytoplasm it is low why we are mentioning this This is an energy mediated process only. Okay, it needs RAN GDP is converted to RAN GDP. So always higher concentration is in nucleus so that it is able to perform the importing of that particular molecule. Okay, then another example here: low concentration in cytoplasm so that the accessory protein is another protein RAN GAP one. they converts the gtp to gdp so higher concentration in nucleus means rcc1 conversion of gdp to gdp from 
live about that it is an active transport it goes via the gtp conversion to gdp that's enough okay so this is the whole process of exporting the rna earlier example what we have seen is importing the nucleo protein already gone from our mind eh plasmin okay so this is exporting the rna rna is already present in the nucleus so it has to be exported to the cytoplasm so for that how it occurs okay so just to observe that the exporting molecule comes and it has the signal in the protein nuclear export signal so they go and bind and with sorry so they go and export in so they will go and attach to the nuclear export signal and it forms a complex with the help of the energy rand gtp which is very high in nucleus so they associate so that this complex with the help of the energy it goes to the cytoplasm after that everything dissociates okay cytoplasm it has to release that uh, rna to the cytoplasm okay so it releases again the export in and the gtp comes back to the nucleus okay so this is the important process okay nuclear pore complexes are constructed from nucleoporins and nucleoporins are transmembrane proteins that can anchor the pore complex to the nuclear envelope especially in the yeast npc they find many nucleoporins and uh, they are de disassembled and reassembled during the process of cell division that is the mitosis okay so this is also important because nuclear division occurs where it goes to the daughter nuclei okay or the vegetative cell division in the mitosis how it move to the two daughter nuclei so in that so they disassembled completely and then reassemblage occurs in the during the process of mitosis some nuclear porins are dynamic they are associate or disassociate with the nuclear pore complex okay in the case of the export of rna move as a ribonucleoproteins this is also an important one you might have studied in molecular biology course what are ribonucleoproteins rnps so they are the one which are responsible for the protein production in the ribosomes so ribonucleoproteins first they accept trna direct transport by exporting t okay so for each and every molecule so there is a specific attached molecule that is the exporting molecule is there and it makes the nuclear export signal and the exporting recognize that signal then it binds to the rand gtp then carry to the cytoplasm then it is dissociated okay. so nuclear localization sequence target the proteins to the nucleus yeah nls is often a short stretch of basic amino acids similarly for each and every organelle in the cytoplasm there is a localization signal if we wanted to transfer to only to the chloroplast only to the mitochondria there are um, uh, sequences okay so for example if you are doing the chloroplast transformation you are inserting a foreign gene into a vector and then you are transforming into a plant you think that you are going to express only in the chloroplast so what we should do we should attach that particular signal chloroplast specific signal to the foreign protein which are to be expressed only in chloroplast tissues okay so like that so the, here the nuclear localization signals are defined and sufficient for the import and the cytoplasmic nls receptors so the receiving end that is through the import through the export in 
from the nucleus it went to it is going to cytoplasm in the cytoplasm the receptor should receive so for that the nls receptors are present in the cytoplasm they mediate the nucleic nucleic acid nucleic protein transport okay then the receptors of nuclear import are cytoplasmic proteins is it clear little bit confusing by the words it is self explanatory just to see that receptors are nuclear import where it should be present in cytoplasm that bind to the nls of the cargo proteins so that it goes to different destinations okay so then the nuclear import receptors so they are present in the so they have to import to the nucleus so for that the carrier proteins are more useful <coughs> then whatever we have seen the outer membrane inner membrane the third layer next to the inner membrane is the nuclear lamina okay it is made up of the intermediary filaments the proteins are called the lamins the our hair protein is also intermediary filaments okay what is the protein present keratin same thing lamin okay so the nuclear lamina is located beneath the inner nuclear membrane they are physically connected by lamina associated integral membrane protein okay so what is their role the nuclear envelope assembly and it gives physical support to the nuclear envelope some other role also there for lamins during the cell division we will study okay how the lamins are helpful okay then proteins connect the nuclear lamina to the chromatin so i think already they have given that point proteins connect the nuclear lamina to the chromatin okay this allow the nuclear lamina to organize the dna replication as well as transcription okay, sorry then next important part in the nucleus is chromosomes by a simple definition what is chromosome condensed form of genetic material that's all at consists of dna and histone proteins that's all okay so the visible change in the nucleus uh, structure is only the chromatin chromosome condensation okay so the condensed form only we are able to see and go on opening it will be of extended so at the final end only you can see a dna double helix okay and the interface chromatin already packed in the nucleosomes so the condenses approximately 1000x further to form the compact chromosome that is easily seen by the microscope so you can see the same photograph of the chromosomes and the long arm short arm of the chromosome or the centromeric region telomeric region so everything is important so how that genome is organized in the nucleus okay and that you studied in molecular biology can i skip this slide is it so everything is known so starting from the dna double helix nucleosome then chromatin fiber then matrix or scaffold associated chromatin loop bonds mm, domains then higher order of packaging the chromatin loop domains then metaphase chromosome just one time you see that then we will move so it is a very big organization chromosome are very much compacted okay and in that how the centromere and telomere regions are there and the satellite sequences where they are present and what is the proximal or arm or distal arm 
So everything you should know. The secondary construction, primary construction. Primary construction is the centromere. This is the general structure of the chromosome. Okay. Then next to that, so based on the place of the centromere, so we are dividing into four different types. So metacentric, so the centromere in center, and the submetacentric slightly moving from the center, yeah, just. Half from the center, then acrocentric. This is a centromere at uh, nearly one end. Then telocentric, almost at the tip. Okay, so these four are important. So metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, telocentric. right now we will come for the same structure how the nucleosomes the lowest level of chromosome organizations are the nucleosomes and they contain dna and proteins that is the histones okay so the dna is in the form of chromatin threads condensed okay two types of proteins are present four in one side and another one h in the five proteins histone proteins small well defined basic arginine and lysine five classes based on the arginine and lysine ratio and non histone chromosomal pro proteins are large and also they diverse both structurally enzymatically regulatory and mostly not well characterized non histone proteins okay so this is the whole structure two molecules each of h2a h2b H3, H4, and the H1 is the linker region. Okay, just observe it very carefully. And so it is around 146 base pairs of supercoiled DNA, around the eight histone molecules, and H1 residues outside the core linker histone binds to the linker DNA. Okay, so you can see the percentage of lysine and arginine in different types H2A or H2B, H3, H4, and H1. Okay, so total amino acids are very high in linker as compared to other other proteins. Total amino acids. Okay, very low in case of H4. Okay, and the molecular weight also similarly. Okay, it is very low in the case of H4. Whereas it is very high in case of H1. Then the ratio is also just you can see that. So the lysine and the lysine content is very low in case of H4. Okay, lysine plus arginine. Possibly. Then just if you observe the how they are during the cell division. metacentric chromosomes how they are get attached okay so in that the threads are important what are their cytoskeleton threads the microtubular arrangements are more important okay so in that there are different uh, structures the inner plate outer plate as well as the fibrous corona and the microtubule okay it looks like this okay it is forcing them to go to the two opposite direction okay from the center and then from the metaphase to telophase okay so then in anaphase they are present in the distinctive daughter nuclei then the centromere also there are kinetochore domain or central domain or pairing domain and in that there are different places in the kinetochore domain and the pairing domain also two important one i think you know then centromere dna sequence in the centromere where we have seen highly repetitive sequence telomeric region at the top isn't it so satellite regions are present here also some of the regions are alpha satellites dna monomer 
to the level of 171 nucleotide pairs are present in the centromere sequence so centromere then telomere then in the central part only all other genes the locations of the genes are identified so how they are measuring the we are saying it is a long arm it is a short arm and besides that the gene is located in that particular place based on the centimorgan isn't it so the recombination distance okay centimorgan and based on that how much they are closer here the gene is there 5 centimorgan away from the, this marker is 5 centimorgan away from the gene so if it is very less 0.2 centimorgan away from the gene that is a very closely linked marker so like that we can say so dna functional site so you can see that how the telomere sequence or centromere sequence and the replication origin so ori is important so how the replication bubble is present then how the kinetochore microfibril or go and attach it to that and then it forms the two daughter cells okay. so this is the just a bubble and how the variation occurs then the chromosomes already we have seen so the precise structure if you see that at least two models they are saying that mostly it is a dna and histones are being uh, the bead and a string okay the 30 nanometer fiber gathered in larger super coils and 80 rich sequence are present this is varies depending upon the organism in plants one type and the animals another type gc rich 80 rich like that okay then so just if you are taking a metaphase chromosome so you can easily see that how they are highly compacted then from that if you just to take a super coiled dna you can easily see that okay so in the chromatin there are two type of chromatins are present they are heterochromatin and the euchromatin that is the true chromatin is the euchromatin whereas the heterochromatin there is a variations present in that in different forms two forms are that they are constitutive heterochromatin facultative heterochromatin so the constitutive heterochromatin there remains the compacted dna is permanently silenced around the centromere and also they are present in the distal arm of y chromosome in male in case of the mammalian system highly repeated sequences and the few genes are present in the what is facultative heterochromatin we are saying obligate parasite facultative parasite partial partial obligate means virus what is what is virus obligate so it needs a host cell so here facultative uh, facultative as well as the obligate or uh, we are saying constitutive so they are not essential okay non essential and the facultative is a false heterochromatin it is not a false means they are not the meaning of not present but they are present but their role in structural arrangement of the organisms the upkeep the housekeeping genes are not there so we are calling it as the facultative heterochromatin okay so the constitutive heterochromatin are important okay then you chromatin that are almost 10% remain is condensed that is the heterochromatin so two forms facultative significantly inactivated specific times example x at y chromosomes are inactivated certain region, certain times males have small y and large x chromosome very few genes in common and single copy of the each gene females have two x only one is transcriptionally active another one is silenced so that condensed one are called bar bodies okay. so this is the facultative heterochromatin then mitotic chromosome 
so the, you know replication transcription and the division and in that the chromosome is intended centromeric dna binds to specific protein then attachment site with the microtubules and kinetochore is attached to the centromere and then they make the division then it goes to the different places so the same thing same diagram is in given in the different form then in the replication region there are two types of uh, replicating sequences are present that is one is the centromeric sequence then telomeric sequence they are autonomous replicating region so you can see a centromeric sequence so they are specialized region of the chromosome that plays the critical role in correct distribution of the duplicated chromosome so without any omission during the mitosis so it has to make 50 50 and then pass on to their daughter nuclei so that is the cell centromeric sequence whereas the telomeric sequence they are present at the ends of the eukaryotic chromosome they are in play a key role in chromosomal replication and maintenance okay. <coughs> okay what are the telomeric repeat sequence it varies depending upon the organism so if you take the yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae so g1 to 3 and t so that is in the repeat okay 3g or 1g 2g 3g so and the t okay and the protozoans you can see that 4g followed by 2t and the plant arabidopsis a triple g triple t so like that there is a variation in the telomeric repeat sequence repeats are it may be a dinucleotide or trinucleotide or tetranucleotide repeats okay and here the some of them are hexanucleotide repeats are also present okay so what is karyotype arrangement of the chromosomes diagrammatic way okay so this is more important to find out the various defects present in the chromosomes okay and this karyotyping is an important technique so simultaneously if anywhere if you are able to learn karyotyping please learn that okay nowadays the machines are in place to find the defects present in the chromosomes but for the neonatal disorders or the uh, birth deformities okay so for that they are, they will do the karyotyping and then they will see that if there any defect on the 6th chromosome or 8th chromosome or various kind of syndromes you know so the telomeric end is lost or the there is a restriction this part is missing in a particular location okay sometimes x y are not well developed okay so those things are easily identified by the karyotyping so most of the specialty hospitals they need a person doing a good karyotyping because there is no need for sophisticated machines to know at the initial stage okay and there was a there was one professor dr sasikala in bharatiya university she is very perfect in the doing the karyotyping in the pregnant mother uh, chromosomal cells okay so she is she was wanted everywhere in hospitals okay but it is very hard to give her time she is a she was a zoology professor retired now and for her patient she did that okay but it is a very good opportunity in this okay it is it is like a part time opportunity you can say not only in humans it is also for animals everywhere karyotyping is a most important one okay now the machines are available everywhere corporate hospitals they have gone for the fact so fluorescence assisted uh, chromosomal pattern they are able to see that by adding with the dyes and see that where the syndromes are present etc but even with the normal dyes 
you know chromosomal staining you might have studied about the banding techniques okay so those banding techniques are useful for doing this uh, karyotyping then the chromosomes the telomeres so they are the each chromosome they are single continuous double stranded dna the tips are with the telomere and the human telomere you know t t a triple g a a t triple c so repeated 500 to 5000 times in the telomeric end okay and okay so the dna binding proteins are also present dna polymerases are present then the telomeres are having the reverse transcriptase enzyme so that they are able to convert the dna into rna okay then the telomeres very important because of complete replication is possible because of that and it form a caps so that it is able to protect from nucleases otherwise the length will be reduced then facilitate the interaction the chromosome very complex then the nuclear matrix so some they are the matrix that is as like cytoplasmic uh, matrix so what is the matrix which are present in the nucleus so the skeleton it is maintain the shape of the nucleus and a lot of uh, scaffolds and that scaffolds is mostly of uh, loops of chromatin and they are involved in the transcription rna processing as well as the replication so how the genome is get anchored in the nucleus the various organelles are anchored in cytoplasm inside the nucleus how the chromatin threads are how the genome okay lamin associated proteins you can see that in the inner layer these are all lamin associated proteins okay so how they are get making the hanging up the hereditary material okay so the traffic as i told the nuclear import is so much ribosomal proteins nuclear proteins then the histones transcription factors snrnps rrnps replication factors viral genomes etc the nuclear export ribosomal subunit and many proteins associated with that even the trna and i think uh, there are many it's not possible for that two or three are here so export as well as the import are possible for nuclear traffic and chromosome territorial model for organization of the chromatin in the interface cell nucleus so in the interface what is the interface between the cell division what happened always you are so between the cell division that phase is between the mitosis the whole phase g1 and g0 and the s phase totally called as interface so the interface the chromosome just how they are arranged then the division occurs we'll see later then what are the variations in the chromosome only two important variations we are, i am giving it here so all other all other syndrome it is different here it is structural variation of the chromosome okay polyteen chromosome and the lamb breast chromosome okay right so the gen chromosomes are called polyteen chromosomes so they are also dividing step at the interface they are very much condensed and they because of the results of endomitosis the mitosis occur again and again so the thickness of that chromatin threads occurs okay it is in the early interface cell okay so you can see that how they are forming a the instead of a single dna molecule it forms a bundles of molecules so that the polyteen chromosomes are um, looking like a band then lamp breast chromosomes where they are present drosophila isn't it okay so just you can see that they are in the meiosis sorry polyteen only in drosophila and this is in the oocytes amphibian oocytes okay 
meiosis during the oogenesis of the amphibian oocytes you can see so it is a bivalent two pair of sister chromatids held together and also the chromosomal threads looks like a loop and dark stained in the interface and there is a decondensation as well as the relaxation occurs so that it forms a lateral loop loop that extends from the main axis of the chromosomes so these loops of active uh, gene replication region so then after the oogenesis completely they retract back and then highly condensed okay so this is the 